A couple of weeks ago, I tried to film a review of what I believe is the lightest real travel tripod that you can buy right now, the ambitiously named Real Travel Tripod from Freewell. My plan was to test it out with my new Hasselblad X2D at a fancy island resort in the Australian with Sundays, and then film a review in its lush tropical environment with lots of magnificent B-roll of its rainforests and beaches. However, things didn't go to plan at all. I'll get to why you shouldn't buy this tripod shortly, as you would have been curious to know from the thumbnail and title, as well as why I now love it. But first, let's get on a plane and then a boat and get out to Hayman Island the northernmost and most luxurious of all the islands in the Queensland with Sundays. The problems actually begin back in January when our booking has to be cancelled a day before departure thanks to an approaching cyclone. We get lots of those up in far north Queensland around Christmas period. Fast forward to our new departure date, March 8th, and the weather is like Melbourne on crack. <laughs> it's hot, then it's cool, then it's dry, then wet, blustery, then still, and all in the space of an hour every hour on repeat. The island itself is gorgeous and the facilities and accommodation are nice and fresh thanks to a $140 million refurbishment two years after Cyclone Debbie trashed it in March 2017. We actually escaped a neighbouring island, Hamilton Island, about 12 hours before that one hit. But enough about the island, while my wife and son were keen to sample the facilities, I wanted to use my new Hasselblad, try out this quirky little tripod from Freewell and shoot a nice video about it in the landscape. My second problem became apparent though when I realised the small retaining bolt in Freewell's head wouldn't let me attach my Hasselblad to it. Normally that's not a problem since I carry a bunch of Allen keys and other small tools with me for that kind of stuff, but I was travelling light and I hadn't packed any. The Freewell comes with an Allen key on the end of its centre column hook, but it's the wrong size for the head. Not only that, I needed a different sized Allen key to remove the plate from my Hasselblad if I wanted to swap it for Freewell's supplied plate. So what did I do? Well I still managed to use the Freewell tripod, just not for photography as I'd intended. Instead I attached my DJI Pocket 3 video camera, which has a peak design plate on it containing cutouts that avoid the Freewell's head bolt. And so I used the Freewell tripod as my video tripod. And that's when I discovered this tripod's main problem. The Freewell has three significant and rather unique attributes. The first one is the way the legs operate, where you can open and close each one with a single twist action. Very clever. The second is a very unique head arrangement, which offers both a pan and tilt feature like a video head, but also a ball head like a stills tripod. The third is its incredible weight, or lack of it. It's super light. Lighter, in fact, than any other tripod I've ever used, weighing in at a mere 900 grams. And that, paradoxically, is where it struggled as a tripod. Even with a lightweight video camera on top, like the DJI Pocket 3, it threatened to tip over whenever a gust of wind struck, since all the weight was up top and almost none down the bottom. But if you only shoot in still conditions, then this tripod, as you're about to see, is actually brilliant. So let's exchange the beautiful Hayman Island for a comparatively boring farm road in semi-rural Victoria and let's look at its virtues because frankly it has quite a few of them.
having just used this for a couple of days up in Queensland, the user experience is still fairly fresh in my mind. And I want to actually show you uh, how this thing functions with a big ass heavy camera on it. So anyway, let's, uh, let's open it up first. Now something that's really unusual about this is it really tries to be all things to all people. I've noticed a couple of travel tripods lately coming out with these uh, fluid heads on them with the typical adjustment arm for doing video work. And that's great. And a nice sort of fluid head here for panning around. But they tend not to be as flexible for stills photographers who would usually prefer either a ball head or a bowl head or a three-way head or something like that. Well, this one solves that problem by having that as well as the video centric uh, arm here and the fluid head. It also has a ball head built into it. So it can seem kind of confusing at first, but if you lock down one, well then you can just use the ball head like you would any other tripod. The only weird thing about it, of course, is having this arm sticking out, which seems a little bit strange. But anyway, all that said, let's stick a camera on it and see how it feels with something heavy like the X2D with the TT Artisan's uh, 90mm f1.25, which is a really heavy, almost cast, cast out of a solid block of granite type of uh, lens. Let's see how it goes with that. So first I'll extend it, then I'll stick a camera on it, uh, extend the center column all the way up, and then we'll see just how sturdy it feels in this pretty blustery situation that we've got here. Now, aside from the fact that this tripod has a couple of very unique features, like the aforementioned ball head combined with a um, pan and tilt fluid head, it also has a couple of other things that are a little bit unique. For example, this little section here has two functions built in. One of them is to open and close the uh, clamp to put your camera on. But the inner part with the red anodized section, well, that's designed for swiveling this bit. Now you might wonder why would you bother with that when you already have this one around here, which allows you to pan it around. Well, the reason for that is if you want to go vertical with this and you don't have an L bracket on your camera, then what you can do is you can actually put this down like this. And then when you adjust this, you can rotate this. So then you can put your camera at any orientation that you like. I think that's kind of unique. And like I said, it's all a little bit confusing at first, but I think once you get used to it, it would be pretty intuitive. So I think all of these features are great. I got nothing against any of these. My main concern really is the longevity of these legs because this is the tripod's party trick is the fact that you don't have multiple um, <clears throat> twist locks on the legs. You don't have multiple lever locks on them like you would say with the little uh, iFootage TCB, what the hell is it called? TC3B uh, carbon fiber travel tripod that I'm, I did a review on recently um, that I'm, I have my video camera on now. Now this one is quite different. You simply twist this like that and then the whole thing comes out like that. And then you lock it and that's locked in place. So theoretically, of course, this is much faster. And I guess it is. That's pretty quick. But it has another advantage too. And that is when you put it down, you can adjust it by just turning one like this and, it, and tightening it up again. And you can do that with each of the legs if you want to. A little twist of the actual leg itself and you can raise and lower it. So it's kind of easier and a little bit more intuitive in a way to adjust individual legs. As you can see here, I can just get this leg, give it a little twist, put it down a bit, tighten up again, and now it's in its new position. That's, that's pretty smart when you think about it. My only concern is just how well these will last. Um, it's hard to say, I mean, it is carbon fiber, so it's gonna be rigid, it's gonna be strong. It's gonna come down to, I guess, just how good the fittings are in, inside each of the leg tubes and how many twists and locks they can withstand. But that's a pretty intuitive setup when you think about it. I kind of like that. And it does beat, I mean, yes, when you've got a tripod with twist locks or lever legs, you can pull all the levers at once on most of the travel tripods, or you can twist all of the twist locks on all the legs at once. 
But once they're out, to undo them, well now they're all staggered at different points. And so you've got to loosen this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one, this one, this one, this one, before you can collapse it all. Whereas with this, one twist and Bob's your uncle. That's pretty good. Now I did notice a couple of times, if I didn't, um, if I didn't unlock it fully all the way, I could go like this and then I'd still be stuck on a couple because I didn't twist it all the way. But that's a minor thing, I'm not fussed about that. Here is my new beast. This is the Hasselblad X2D with the 102 megapixel, a lot of people say 100 megapixel, but it's actually 102 megapixel um, medium format sensor on it. And I've probably shot, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe 1200, 1500 shots on this now. And a lot of those were up in far north Queensland over the previous weekend. And I really, really enjoy using this camera. And it's not for the reasons that most people think. And I'm going to do um, a video on this in a little while. A lot of people think that, um, you know, the, the real party trick of this camera is it's megapixels. But you can get that with a GFX. Um, <clears throat> you can do upscaling with software. You can do sometimes upscaling in camera, depending on the camera and, and uh, the limitations of that. Yes, having 100 megapixels is nice. You can really punch in hard, or as um, Hugh Brownstone says, you can crop the crap out of it and still end up with a great image. I do love that. But the thing that really appealed to me with this was I kind of got sick of just how capable, this sounds stupid, I know. I kind of got sick of just how capable the R5 was, which I sold to buy this, because it does so many things, because it can do so many things. And really, for a stills camera, I only wanted to do a couple of things. This camera is so much nice. Whoop. There you go. <laughs> it's very light. <clears throat> and with a couple of caveats, this camera is very easy to use. It's very intuitive. Anyway, I don't want to crap on about it because that's for another video. Let's put it on this uh, tripod and see what it's like. Now, one thing I would caution is because this has so many different ways to adjust the way it sits here, namely the ball head, which I mentioned before, the tilt, the pan, and of course the rotation up at the top of the head. You want to make sure everything's kind of locked off before you walk away and let go of your camera, especially if it's something, you know, fairly pricey and fairly heavy. All right, so let's get the center column all the way up. I'll just make sure everything's nice and tight first. That looks pretty level. Speaking of level, no bubble level thing on it. I never use them anyway, so I'm not really fussed. All right, let's get the center column all the way up. The um, center column is just this nice little thing here, and it stops at the top, thanks to a slight protrusion here of the bag hook, which is also alloy, like most of the bits and pieces on this uh, tripod that aren't carbon fiber. <coughs> All right, so that's sitting up at maximum height now. Yes, we've got a little bit of wobble there. That's totally understandable. We've got a, a pretty heavy camera on there. Uh, we've got windy conditions. Yes, that's pretty wobbly. So, without taking any photos with this thing, I could say right now that this kind of arrangement here, with it fully extended, the legs fully extended, center column fully extended, and any kind of camera on here that can catch the wind in this environment, which is pretty much any camera <laughs> that isn't shaped like a bullet, it's gonna be no good for long exposures because it's gonna wobble. And I guess this is why big tripods exist. Because little tripods like this, yes, they can handle the weight. This can handle whatever it is, I'll put the amount up here, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't wobble <laughs> while it's handling that weight. And yes, in a breeze, this is going to wobble. I certainly wouldn't want to be doing a three second exposure of moving trees, maybe not even a sixth of a second exposure of a waterfall with it sitting like this. I think as a solution, let's put it back down again low and see what it's like down low. Like this, it may well be fine. These legs are fairly rigid. They don't bow terribly easily. Yeah, it's no worse than this eye footage. Definitely no worse than the eye footage for how that bows. In fact, if anything, I'd have to say this is probably a bit more rigid, which is pretty impressive actually. Let me just feel this 
I think if you had the center column down, I think it might be all right. I think you might actually get away. Oop, but look at that. Did you see the wind? Just move it a little bit. Oop, but look at that. Oop. Yeah, sometimes, you know, there's just no substitute for weight. Because what you've got here, and this is the issue with something that's light. Yes, it's great to carry around. It's good to go hiking with. But if you are gonna be in a windy environment, like we are right now, you end up with an object that's very top heavy. You've got flat surfaces like we've got here that can catch the wind and you've got almost no weight down the bottom. So it's very top heavy. So if the wind catches it enough, it could end up pushing a tripod over like this. So that's not very hard to do that. I guess this is a, a lesson with all lightweight travel tripods is in many environments, they can be fine. But if you're in extreme conditions, <clears throat> if you're in windy conditions, then maybe they're not the best bet. And this is when I think, especially with a, an expensive piece of technology and glass sitting on a, well, the glass is not expensive, that lens was quite cheap actually. But when you, you've got an expensive device sitting on your tripod and you're dealing in questionable circumstances, either windy or say you've got waves crashing up against your tripod, you're probably not gonna wanna risk it to something that was nice and light to get you there, but runs the risk of toppling over when you're there either because of water movement or wind. So see, I wouldn't walk away from this now in this situation because I'd be scared shitless the thing's gonna tip over. I'm actually watching <laughs> the iFootage tripod too to make sure that that doesn't tip over with the camera on it. I guess the only advantage is the Pocket 3 is a very skinny camera, so it's not gonna catch the wind quite as easily as something big and flat like this. Okay, in terms of how strong the grip is on the head, yep, that's not going anywhere, that's really good. Let's try this, um, this vertical shooting business. So what you would do is you would go down like this, loosen off the red one, and then you can shoot vertically. Now, this is the other thing too, is because of this, this arm here, that can get in the way of the legs. It's another obstruction. So you have to kind of really pick how you're gonna do this, which kind of makes me think again that this is why I was craving a simple camera again, a simple stills camera. Because having all of these options here on the tripod might be good, but too much choice is often a serious concern. I think actually a good role for this is as a supplementary tripod for people who shoot with two cameras or who shoot video like I am here. This is probably a fantastic YouTubers or vloggers tripod because it is so compact, it's so easy to quickly get out of the bag, extend the legs, put a camera on it and start shooting. Um, but also good for environments where you don't have to deal with, um, with wind and you're not placing it in water. I think in those situations, this would probably be very good. It, it feels very well made, I'll give it that. I mean, I've used Freewell products for a long time, but never a device like this. I've been using uh, other products of theirs, mainly filters and that sort of stuff, and they've all been good. Like all tripods, the legs, you know, come out like this with a simple catch on the, on the leg here, like this, to different stages, three stages, so that's pretty much 90 degrees, just a bit off 90 degrees. And as you go down, it clicks, and then clicks again, like that. We've got um, a number of mounting holes here for accessories, here and here. This is the adjustment for the, um, for the center column. That's what you loosen for the center column to go up. We've got a hex style screw here for the, uh, for the tilt section of the head. Oh, we've got another mounting point up here. That's kind of cool. So you've got a mounting point there. So look, it's a very versatile device. I like the way it's made. Comes in a nice little bag. A lot of them do these days. I like the uh, the anodizing and the uh, the fit and finish. I'll tell you one thing that I, that I do like about this over the little iFootage TC3B, <laughs> I have to keep checking what it's called, is the lever locks on that. It's got four for each leg 
and they're a little bit flimsy. They're a little bit, yeah. And the way they're attached to each of the sections of the legs is a bit loose. I don't like that very much. Whereas this, there's none of that faff on there. It's super clean, super clean. I really like that. I'm just not a big fan of the complex head arrangement. I have to say, this could be a really good contender as a travel tripod for stills photography with just a different head on it. I don't like having this lever on here on my tripods, even for video. I would much rather just set it up with a ball head and just make sure that's level and then I'm off. I don't film other people where I need to pan and tilt as I'm filming, so I don't need that function. So I reckon this would be a great little travel companion with a nice little simple ball head on it and nothing else. I do like the flexibility of having the center column. I've kind of started to go back towards liking center columns again. I haven't, I haven't really been a fan of them for a long time and we saw before how much it wobbled in the wind with a center column up. But it does give you flexibility when it comes to micro adjustments on your composition. It is useful to be able to just go, oh, I just need to go a little bit higher like that. You know, that is useful, especially if you've dropped your legs a little bit and you're in a bit of an awkward situation with one leg up and rocks here and everything. It can be a real faff to get that extra little bit of height, but with a center column, you do get that. Now, one thing that's uh, nice and simple too on this that I notice is if you remove the nice little alloy uh, bag hook down the bottom here, then it's very easy to remove the center column. So you just undo that and out it comes. And then you can invert it so that you can shoot upside down. Something that I almost, well, not even almost, something I never do. <laughs> I probably haven't done that for 20 or 30 years. I just have no need for it. But if you're a macro photographer, I mean, you think about it as a macro photographer out in, well, even if you're in a studio, but especially out hiking, this could be a rip, or a rip a little tripod because you can get down really low to the ground to shoot little toadstools or insects or mushrooms, that kind of stuff. Textures on the forest floor. That would be nice. That's super light to carry. Maybe swap out this somewhat confusing head with a simple ball head and I reckon that would make a really nice little package. But again, I have to say, I kind of like this leg arrangement. I think that it's more than just a novelty. I think it is four less things to come loose that need adjusting, assuming they last. It's four less things adding weight to the tripod. Four less things to catch on stuff as you're walking around. Easy to adjust when it's stationary by just dropping one leg a little bit like this. I think that's kind of cool. I think this thing's got uh, a few more pluses than I first gave it credit for. See, that, that's where that's useful, that kind of situation. See, that's, that's pretty cool, being able to do that. I think I like it. I think I like it. I just need to put a different head on it because this arm business and all of these options here, I think they'd confuse the crap out of me. Especially if I get up early in the morning, which I almost never do, to do a sunrise shoot and my brain's foggy. <laughs> I might end up binning a rather expensive camera, which would be disappointing. Oh, look, it does have a bubble level. It's got a bubble level that gets uh, blocked <laughs> by the camera but I guess you can level it before you put your camera on it. Yeah. You know, after playing around with it, I think I, think I have to give it a thumbs up. I think it's not bad, this thing. All right, I'm gonna put my camera back. <laughs> All right, I don't know if this was useful or not, this review. I'm not very good at reviewing things. Certainly not from a technical perspective. I'd rather just use it and just tell you what I think of it. So I guess this is really trying very hard to be all things to all people. And to a degree, it's, it succeeds. It, you know, it can be a video tripod. It can be a stills tripod. 
It can be for panos. It certainly can be for hiking. You can use a pretty heavy camera on it. But a pretty heavy camera in a windy situation like this, well then probably not. But then that's true of all very light tripods. And this is a very light tripod. It is beautifully light and very compact. I think it's grown on me. <laughs> anyway, I hope this was moderately useful to you. I kind of question the value of this video, but as somebody who is a bit of a tripod lover and has now, I think officially now has too many of them, I am quite impressed with this little thing. I really am. Providing it holds up, providing these twist locks hold up over time, I think this is a nice little option. Thanks for watching. Hope I didn't bore the crap out of you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. I would. <laughs> anyway, if you want to have a look at a review of the tripod that my video camera's on, the TC3B, just have a look here. And if you want to look at something else that I filmed recently that YouTube thinks you might like, then just click here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.